pleasure to welcome you to Minneapolis St. Paul. The time is 8 a.m. Please remain seated with seatbelts next. It is 8.30 in the morning. I have just landed in Minneapolis, Saturday, April 27th. I have never been here before, but if you're wondering how this whole trip came about, I love searching flights. It's like Pinterest to me. Decided, oh, Alliance Field, Allianz. Allianz Field looks cool. I wonder how much flights are. My one-way flight here was $65. So I uh, did some research, found good places to eat. It's like National Independent Bookstore Day. And according to some guy on Reddit, this this place is just littered with very quirky independent bookstores. So I'm gonna do that today. If the weather holds up, I'm gonna go to the Twins game. For now, I'm gonna do what I always do on Saturday, the biggest breakfast my body can muster. I'm gonna bebop around town all day. Excited to take you on my adventure and excited to catch my first Minnesota United game at Allianz Field tomorrow morning. Between Clean Sheets does MSP. True crime if you have it. Oh, I sure do. There you are. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, now we're going for something a little bit more Instagrammable. This is number three. my stamp but lesson learned bone shakers is maybe a little bit too radical for me all right last bookshop on my list was milkweed I'll probably do a little friendly giveaway since the likelihood of me coming back to Minneapolis anytime soon is very slim I want somebody to enjoy all the coupons from the book but no time to waste we're gonna go to the twins Greetings from the great state of Minnesota. You know him, you love him, you want him, Adrian Pinch! This is quite the production we it's put gonna in be, here. Uh, it's gonna be good. And we're gonna get you out of here because I know you have much, much more important things uh, to think about with the game uh, with the game tomorrow. You gotta put something inside that's gonna bring them back week after week after week, which is your job. So do you think that you are moving in that direction to give them something that's going to compete on a consistent basis when it comes to Major League Soccer? I think so. I think when you look at the performance the other night against Galaxy, they spent that much money to put that team on the field. We were more than a match for them the other night. We were the better team after the first 10 minutes. We can compete with anybody in this week at this moment in time. Two hours later.
see Alexi Lawless do his State of the Union podcast. I was introduced to the Chief Revenue Officer for Minnesota United, who actually used to work for the league. He asked me what I was doing in town, and when I told him I had traveled here, not only by myself, but also did not have a ticket yet, he was so sweet to hook me up with a club-level ticket, which is very similar to the season ticket I have for DC United. So behind me, we have the Brew Hall. I have infiltrated the club. I am wearing Jersey, I have no shame. It is absolutely gorgeous. I am back in my hotel from an afternoon at Allianz Field. Unfortunately, we handed them their first win at that stadium. Allianz is about a month old. They broke ground on it in December of 2016, shortly before Minnesota had their inaugural stadium. Before Allianz, they played at TCF Stadium, which is the University of Minnesota's football stadium. It holds about 50,000 people. Played their first two seasons as an MLS franchise at TCF had an average attendance of what would normally sell out a soccer-specific stadium. Last year, when Zlatan came with LA Galaxy in the fall, they packed out the stadium with about 52,000 people. Before TCF Stadium, Minnesota United and several iterations of Minnesota United, including Minnesota Thunder and the Stars, part of the now defunct NASL, played at this sports complex called the National Sports Center in a suburb called Blank. That stadium had about 10,000. Hello, this is Cheyenne. Hey, it's Cheyenne. I can uh, I can come down. Give me just a second. My pizza is here. I'll be right back. All right, I ordered pizza from the highest rated pizza delivery in downtown Minneapolis, Pizza Luce, and I got the Luce. This. Oh my gosh. I don't really even like pizza. I hesitate to say that. Uh, pretty much all my closest friends know this about me, but sometimes I'm just in the mood for it because I like cheese so much and I love tomatoes. So I don't really understand why pizza wouldn't do it for me. So we're gonna keep this going. National Sports Center, TCF, Allianz. So Allianz seats 19,400 people. They have the ability to expand and I think that they'll do that. Uh, supposedly they wanna fill the corners of the stadium. It is a beautiful soccer specific stadium. When I attended the podcast taping at Brew Hall, I ran into somebody uh, who I didn't know but who asked me what I was doing there. If I was with the podcast team and I said, no. Well, do you work for DC United? No. Well, do you date anyone on the team? Do you know anyone on the team? <laughs> 
No, I'm just here. I looked up a flight uh, a couple weeks ago and I think I explained this to you already. I was explaining that to this guy and he said, that's amazing. Well, what do you do? I was like, I work in politics. I have this super amateur YouTube channel and I like to document everything that I do. He said, well, where are you sitting tomorrow? And I said, I'm not entirely sure. I can't tell if I want to be in the middle of it, in the wonder wall, as they say, which is that standing room only end of the stadium. It seats about 3,000 people. And I say seats. It does not seat them. It stands them. It's that standing guardrail. Anyone there does not sit down. Maybe I could stand there. I don't really join the away travel crowd. Don't have any sort of reason. I just am either visiting friends when I go to another town or I end up just wanting to sit by myself in silence. I also don't drink alcohol, so pre-gaming, I wouldn't say it's a rarity in some of the videos I'll provide, but I just don't tailgate in the traditional way. And in talking to this guy, who ended up being the chief revenue officer for Minnesota United, I didn't have to tailgate, I found out, because he was gonna give me a ticket to a suite very similar to the ticket that I have at Audi Field, except for it was actually in a party suite. So access to the club level, which was so simple and so well done. They had these big TV screens that Audi doesn't have that I wish that they did. We do the food so much better, Audi does, but I also feel like the Eagle Bank Club gets so crowded. I'll usually get there right when the doors open, just so I don't have to worry about a seat. I keep forgetting, and you can do this as well, take your food and your drinks to your actual seat and sit down. The other nice thing too was I was not in the sun. I took a lap around the stadium. I love the food that they have to offer. I love how it's set up. That brew hall has big kind of garage door windows and they have it open even when it's not game day, which is where I went and saw the podcast taping. It has like a hundred beers on tap. People can hang out there like they would the Heineken rooftop at Audi. I did not hang out there today. I parked and just walked straight into the stadium, said hey to Bryant, the CRO, and then watch the game. The supporter section is made up of several different supporters groups. The longest standing supporters group and biggest with over a thousand members is called the Dark Clouds. They are akin to the Screaming Eagles at DC United. Very friendly, welcoming, and a little bit, uh, man, what's the word I'm looking for? Most would say I took a video, you can see, basically the entire supporter section is kind of split in half. There's the rough and rowdy, flag, cheers, hammered, and then as you pan to the side, just people with their arms folded, cheering very intermittently. And that's often a byproduct of the supporters section being the cheapest tickets. So people who don't know the stadium culture very well will purchase a ticket in the standing room section or supporters section and not be nearly as enthusiastic as the actual supporter section. Of course, even within the people who are in an organization like Screaming Eagles or like the Dark Clouds won't always bring the excitement in the way that some supporters want them to. A couple years ago, there was another supporters group started called True North Elite. They are significantly rowdier, which is not everybody's cup of tea. They do and did do in the inaugural game a good job of coordinating TIFO. They obviously work hard together to create a united front and they do call themselves the Wonder Wall, which we saw after DC lost the game today. <laughs> What I liked about the stadium was everyone would stand uh, during a corner kick, everyone gets excited, everyone's got their scarves up, Wonderwall comes on, it kind of goes a little quiet, and then of course it builds up. I listen to that song when I'm in a sad mood, which I did today because we lost, but my biggest takeaway was uh, Donovan Pines, center defender, graduate of the University of Maryland, had been playing for or on the roster for Loudoun United FC, our USL affiliate. He crushed it. He scored a goal that was later rescinded, but it was so cute. He ran all the way from the goal to the bench, like sprinted all the way there. It was almost like he was running to his dad, like, Coach Ben, did I do a good job? It was so cute. Minneapolis has been one of my favorite cities to visit. It feels weird visiting alone and that's the kind of the hard time that Bryant was giving me yesterday. This is a call to all DC United players though or staff or other uh, groupies. Please be my friend so people stop asking me why I'm here. 
This is my 10th MLS stadium that I will have traveled to. Minnesota United really saw its start when the stars were purchased and moved and became a part of the now defunct NASL. They won their inaugural season and then in 2013, they completely rebranded and as support grew, 2015, they made a big enough splash that Don Garber and the MLS decided that they were gonna be the next franchise. And after last season, they announced their very first USL affiliate, Forward Madison FC, playing in Madison, Wisconsin, which is a huge deal. They also interviewed Adrian Heath for this podcast last night. He's been Minnesota's coach ever since they started in MLS. And before that, he started with Orlando City as their first coach when they joined MLS in 2015. As of today, they've now had two clean sheets at Allianz Field, as between clean sheets can appreciate. And if the season was over today, they'd be making the playoffs for the first time in their history. But to sign off, I'd like to say I'm excited for the future of Minnesota United. I do have some exciting stuff in the works, and I hope that you'll join me on Twitter or Instagram at BTWN Clean Sheets, or here on YouTube where you can like and subscribe to my videos and my channel. And with Pizza Luce, Pizza Fingers. Peace, love, and soccer. Thanks, guys.